Super Mario 3D World has a lot of things going for it. I mean, I think there's just so much about this game that I love, and that's partially why I can never stop talking about it on this YouTube channel. However, one thing that I think is vastly underrated in 3D World is the amount of power-ups this game has, and the variety in those power-ups. I mean, you're seeing the cat suit right now, but this game also has a tanuki suit, a boomerang flower, the classic fire flower, the really unique double cherry, and so many more. However, you know, the more the merrier, and especially with power-ups this cool, I can never be satisfied with what we have, I always want to see it, you know, as many as possible. So in the fourth episode of Road to 3D World, we are going to be talking about power-ups that I want to see added to Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury, and now most of these power-ups will just obviously be added to the Bowser's Fury section of that game, however some of them I think could actually be retroactively added into the older normal 3D World levels, and I'll point those out when we get to them. If you're new to Road to 3D World, basically every single episode we take one world of the game and I play through it while talking about something about Super Mario 3D World. Obviously this is episode 4 in the series so we are going to be hitting up World 4 today starting off with 4-1 Ant Trooper Hill. Alright, so first up, let's talk about the the coolest power-up I think I've come up with. Um, It's like the most original one by far because it's never existed in any other Mario game, and that is a potential mouse power-up. Now, what would this mouse power-up do? It sounds kind of stupid, but Mario has had kind of a history with power-ups that are somewhat similar to this. First of all, obviously you have the Mini Mushroom, which was, uh, I believe, originally introduced in New Super Mario Bros. on the DS. Back there, it had a ton of different uses. You could use it to like get into these mini pipes and stuff. I think the mouse power-up could be used somewhat similar to that. It could be, maybe be used to like get into little cracks in like certain walls and stuff. On top of that, this is completely random, but I think they could do an entire level made out of cheese and like the cheese has little holes that only the mouse, you know, power-up Mario can actually go through. On top of that, as you see right now, the main power-up in 3D World, it was like its main selling point is the cat suit power-up. And I think it's kind of cute, you know, like a cat and mouse sort of thing. Obviously, the mouse power-up would be really unique. It would be, uh, make make the characters small, but it could also kind of act as like a speed up thing, or maybe if you wanted to get really advanced, you could run up walls, so kind of like a buffed cat suit. It would lead to an interesting trade-off because obviously the cat suit can climb up walls, but you know, the mouse can run up walls, so maybe it can go further than the cat suit because obviously the cat suit has like limited stamina when it's running up walls. So maybe it presents an interesting trade-off. Obviously a mouse would be weaker than a cat, so it would make sense if the mouse power-up was like, you know, a one-hit kind of kill thing, like when you're on the weakest form of Mario or when you have the uh, mini mushroom in New Super Mario Bros. DS, but it's smaller, faster, lighter, and can climb further than the cat suit power-up, so it's a bit of a trade-off there to see which one you want to choose. Obviously, the mouse suit could be added back into, you know, these past levels, and it would be pretty cool and add that risk versus reward element that I mentioned earlier. However, I think it would be best utilized in its own unique levels, kind of designed around the power-up. So, obviously, those would have to come in Bowser's Fury, or if they add in, like, a new world to the main, you know, base 3D world game. It could be there, but overall the mouse power-up I think is really cool, however I'm gonna move on now because there's a lot of different ideas I have and I've spent way too long talking about this one power-up. As we jump into level 4-3, I want to take a moment to talk to you guys about one of my favorite power-ups in Mario history. It kind of made a return in this game, but not really. I'm talking about the propeller suit from New Super Mario Bros. Wii. Now, if you don't know, in this game, there are certain levels where you can get this, like, propeller box thing where you pick it up and it goes on your head, and it kind of functions the same as a propeller suit. Except, obviously, it's not a power-up, meaning you can only get it in the levels that have the propeller box because you can't take the box things out of the actual level that you get them in. I would love to get an actual propeller suit in this game. I mean, it would be super useful on like this level right here when you want to kind of get some of that verticality when the blocks disappear out from underneath you. On top of that, the propeller suit is just one of my favorite power-ups. I think it's just really fun to use. And it's unfortunately one of those ones that we've never truly seen in 3D. I mean, I mentioned earlier we've seen like a variation of it in the box thing, but it's just never been really shown off in 3D, and I know it can be really cool if Nintendo eventually decides to do that. Speaking of power-ups from New Super Mario Bros. Wii, I'm gonna keep this one brief and talk quickly about the Ice Flower. Now, the Ice Flower is pretty simple. Um, it's like the Fire Flower, but ice. Mainly, I want this to see all the different characters in the Ice Flower costumes. I think that would be pretty sick. I almost died there, but, you know, we're chilling. The way my recording is set up, I can't hear game audio, so this level in particular is kind of impossible. <laughs> However, I don't want it just for the costume. I think the actual ice power-up would be pretty cool. I mean, look at these boomerang guys. If I could freeze their boomerangs and then jump on the boomerangs as a platform, I think that would be pretty sick. 
On top of that, if Nintendo wanted, they could give us the penguin suit instead, also shown off for the first time in New Super Mario Bros. Wii. It could kind of just be the ice flower, plus, I don't know, maybe you swim a little faster, and maybe when you're on ice itself, it could be kind of like the, uh, the ice skating shoe you can get in. I don't know, I think that's a pretty good idea. And as we head into Spike's Lost Ruins, as you can see right here, I think that's the name of this level, it's something like that. This is one of my favorite levels in the game, by the way. I mean, it doesn't do anything, like, super crazy, it's just, like, a very 3D world level. Like, it just, this is one of the first levels I think of when I think of this game. Anyway, with that aside, I want to talk about a couple more power-ups before we finish off this world, one of those being the Blue Shell. Now, the Blue Shell power-up was really cool. First off, in New Super Mario Bros. DS, uh, it basically allowed you to go into a Koopa Shell and, like, break bricks by just, like, going super fast in the Koopa Shell. Now, the problem with that is that's technically kind of already in the game. If you see a Koopa, you can actually uh, take their shell and then sprint and press crouch while you're holding the shell, and you will get in the shell, and it's basically the same thing as the Blue Shell power-up except you get dizzy after like 10 seconds of doing it and you can't, it's not like a permanent thing it's just like a little i guess more of an easter egg than anything it's not really that useful i would love for this to be actually useful like i just think the mechanic of getting in a koopa shell and gliding around is so cool and they also already have it coded into the game as i just said so actually making it a power-up would not be that difficult at all as we head into the final level the final castle of world for lava rock layer i want to talk about the final power-up it's another power-up that is technically like kind of half already coded into the game. I feel like I've been talking a lot about new Super Mario Bros. games in this episode, like I've been taking a lot of power-ups from those games, and this one is no different. Coming from new Super Mario Bros. 2, this is the Golden Mario power-up. Now basically what this power-up did is any sort of movement you made, you would just get coins. That was literally it. Now I thought this power-up was sick when it first came out. Now naturally, obviously, new Super Mario Bros. 2, you didn't really use the coins that much. I mean, you could try and collect a million and get like a different title screen, I think, but it wasn't that useful. However, coins are pretty useful in this game because if you're playing with a group of people who die a lot, then you're going to want to have a lot of lives so you don't have to start over from the last castle. Or last save. I think it kicks you out to last save, actually. The semantics of where it kicks you out isn't really that important. What's important is the coins would be absolutely sick. And I mentioned before, it's kind of already coded into the game, and that's true. When you get to a world like uh, Mushroom, I think, one of the bonus worlds where it starts like recycling older levels, you get to level 1-3, but recycled. It's like Mount Beanpole, I think it's called. Basically, you get this cat suit, like the one I'm wearing right now, except it has a red bandana on it. And I don't really know why. I think it's probably something to do with like Japanese lore. Maybe there's like a statue it's based off of. But essentially, whenever you ground pound, you turn into a Cat Mario statue, and you end up just spurting out, like, a ton of different, uh, coins. Now, it's super fun on that level, because obviously that level is super vertical, so you can just ground pound and get hella coins. But the fact that, like, they have kind of coded that into the game means that it wouldn't be that difficult to transfer that, like, instead of just when you ground pound, it's also when you, like, walk or do anything. On top of that, in the next episode, I'm gonna show off a level that is, a uh, very reminiscent to New Super Mario Bros. 2. It's that golden train level for any of you who remember what I'm talking about. So that would definitely be a level that they added this uh, golden flower into. With that out of the way, we get a 10 out of 10 on the flagpole, landing on the top, getting that extra 10,000 points. As Luigi saves the fourth Sprixie, I want to thank you guys all so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed the video, then please subscribe. We're over 100,000 subscribers, which means the world to me, but now we're a far, far ways away from our new goal of 200,000. Also, if you made it this far, feel free to watch episodes 1, 2, and 3 of Road to 3D World, and make sure you turn on the notification bell so you get notified for episode 5. With that out of the way, there's really not that much more to say. Hope everyone had a happy holidays, and I'm Thomas from The Switched Up, signing off. Peace.